shut up. This light one. The age of the influencer is over. The time of the buck has come. Okay. Take five, maybe. That's just filler. I always I do that just to pass it more time because you know some of these workout clips go for a while. Anyways, some some guy commented, and I'm not really upset about this, but he said that bench press is the king of the lifts, and he might, maybe he said it as a joke. But you know, people do talk about the king of the lifts. And they say they usually say clean and jerk. Some people say deadlifts. I saw a video today. Mike Isretel said that the um, stress to hyper, the stress to uh, reward ratio of deadlifts isn't worth it. And since he can talk really fast, and he has, uh, you know, he's a good, he's got a pretty good grasp of the English language. I'm sure he convinced a lot of people not to do deadlifts. He's a doctor. Oh yeah, exactly. Yeah, and doctors are like the arbiters of uh, I don't know human health and the the, the, the human human body. Anyways. Um, Doctor of Exercise Science. Yeah, whatever, the, whatever the hell that is. Um, yeah, the rear deltoids we train four days a week. Uh, I reviewed all the studies. And so, anyways, bench press definitely isn't the king of the lifts, because, like you can see here, I mean, I don't say that it's not useful because otherwise I wouldn't be doing it. Because you know, what do you you don't want to have a? It's like Ripito says he, uh, a man shouldn't have a flabby pick. Okay, although lots of the best bench pressers do, but maybe you've got to sacrifice a little bit of your um, aesthetic for a bigger bench number. Because, you know, especially the guys who say that bench press, especially this guy too, they're all, uh, let's say they're, they, the guys who say bench press is the best lift, they're pretty stout. And they also probably have short arms. <clears throat> so, you know, the, the guy, let's say you're, if you have like the, the, the best biomechanics for a certain lift, then generally people say that that's the best lift. I have the Imperial, like, you know, in turn, not like uh, the Imperial, like Elder Scrolls build where everything is medium. Because I don't, I have slightly longer arms and then I have like medium torso length, medium leg length. Okay, well, and so, I mean, my deadlift's higher than my other lifts. Uh, that's because I also kind of specialized in it. And, uh, but yeah, I, overhead press is definitely a lot, well, to me, a lot more impressive than bench press. It's just that, I don't know, maybe in the 80s or something, when powerlifting became somewhat popular and then it was all about uh, bench press because, you know, that's what they did in America. And because back in the old days when they still did the overhead press, in Olympic weightlifting, they uh, people would train that a lot, and then that got taken out. Then everything became the bench. I don't know be why Arnold Schwarzenegger or uh, that's what you'd always see in those '80s movies. People. All right, this is the the new addition to the bulk. I'm making my man cakes with the whipping cream, although it was so damn thick. I piled it in and normally it smooths out, but there's a freaking pile right in the middle. I'm hoping that smooths itself out. <laughs> As it cooks. But yeah, this right here. Because what I would do before is drink olive oil. But olive oil doesn't digest that well. At least for me, I don't digest that well. So you get a hell of a lot of freaking calories in this. Uh, mono and diglycerides. So it's basically real cream for sure. Yeah. Anyways, this might be the trick. We'll see how good or bad this is. But I also got chocolate chips, obviously. Okay. So I, I put I put the whipping cream on my in my man cake, and it just made my man cake into a fucking cookie. And you don't cook cookies. You don't put cookies in a fucking frying pan. So it did, it all fucked up when I flipped it.
but it'll still taste good. But uh, I think the what I'm going to have to do is only use a little bit of the cream because the cream's so thick that it doesn't absorb the flour very well. So you end up with like a way bigger mass than you should. So, yeah, and holy shit, because it, like, it's like freaking glue. Trying to build you skull and go. Yeah, yeah. That's like Bob Sapp when he uh, crushed the apple and all the Japanese people were impressed. <laughs> yeah. Anyways, see what happened to that shirt? Yeah, you do, you know, you once you, uh, one flex. Yeah, that joke's, joke's kind of old. My friend, my uh, Australian teacher said that about my friend's shirt and uh, his, his gym shirt that he wore back in high school. But it was it was it was funnier with him because that my friend that he said ripped his shirt flexing had absolutely no muscle or has absolutely no muscle. No offense, but uh, anyways, weighted chin ups. These are feeling pretty good. Okay, arms are looking decently, decently huge. Uh, yeah. What else is there to say? Wish I could think of something. Chad, what are you, you going to say? You got a comment on that I have, form? I have, I have, like, nothing ever to say. I no, that's true. I the wardrobe change before when you went from benching with those shirts on to the jorts. Oh, yeah, that's because I, I uh, in between sets, I decided to um, put the jorts on because I had to go to the grocery store immediately to get my uh, post-workout nutrition, my cranberry juice, because I, well, I was dehydrated. Right. Yeah, I was dehydrated. Right. So... I I wasn't gonna go out with my uh, swim shorts on, which was what those red ones are. They have the, they still have the netting in them. Wait, those, those are the ones I'm wearing now. Okay, because <laughs> I yeah I, I wear the same shorts until they um, are basically like grossing me out. So about two months, or they rip because that's why the green shorts aren't as I don't even wear them as much anymore because they uh, they got a bigger rip in the uh, the, the gooch area. This looks sped up. <laughs> Sped up. Well, sped up. Those are called power reps, Chad. Whenever you can't think of some like a creative way to describe something that has to do with weightlifting, you just say, you just put power in front of it. So, um, you know, there's power gut. What else is there? Uh, power building. I don't know. You. It just sounds, it just sounds cool. my breakfast okay this is 35 percent cream and it's 50 milliliters per tablespoon take one tablespoon is 15 milliliters so i estimate that this is about 150 milliliters okay so that's 500 calories so yeah 50 calories per, per 15 milliliters and then i've got one slice of brioche bread plain just for some just to pad the calorie count and then i've got my man cake and added in the chocolate chips. And so I've never drank cream before. That's pretty good. That's it just tastes like whipped cream, but liquid. Holy cow. I think I can get used to that. It is expensive, but gotta pad the calories. I think I need to have between sixty five hundred and seven thousand to actually gain weight. Well, to gain enough weight. Mmm. Holy cow. You might want to try that. Because, you know, this... Yeah, unlike the olive oil, this is more expensive. Probably twice as expensive, but... This tastes good. Olive oil freaking blows. Um... Italian people are delusional. I'm Italian. I, I know exactly what I'm talking about. Olive oil freaking blows. 
cream is where it's at. And uh, <clears throat> brioche bread's good. I know I'm still congested, but I'm thinking this will do the trick. I need to gain. I might not. To, I might not have to go into August for this uh, cycle. Um, it's uh, just. We'll see. I don't know if I. We'll see how this goes tomorrow. How much? If I if I, if I get my press, because if I don't get my press, then I'm gonna have to uh, really. I don't, I don't even know up up the calories because. I think this will do the trick though. All right. Okay. Good. I got lots of time. So I just did my squats, and the trembolone has hit me. I've had to. I've had a hard time catching my breath in that before from the trend, and I think that this dosage might be as high as I can go. Because for my twenty rep squats, to not be affected. Because the problem's not finishing the set. The problem is catching your breath after the set because that's fucking scary. And uh, four sixteen point six, that was really easy. Almost no pain in my T bands, and uh, so I'm feeling pretty good. <sighs> but I'm a little, I'm a little dehydrated. Okay, so, oh yeah, I gotta mix this up with. I don't have any distilled water, so I gotta put in. Uh, I think working out helped with my brain fog a bit because I ate breakfast. I had, you know, I, you saw the whole thing. I was trying to record something. Couldn't even think at all. That's why I think if I, if you're a professional athlete or strongman, holy cow, you're not going to be an intellectual. Not because you don't have the, I think most strongmen are, are intelligent because it takes the deferral of gratification to become strong because it takes, it doesn't happen overnight. And low, low IQ people don't have the ability to defer gratification. And so that's why they're fat and weak. So anyways, just by, because of your diet, uh, you're not going to be an intellectual as a strong man. Although I've seen some big guys, like there's the one, uh, I think Keneally, some bench press there. That guy's really smart. Because you can just tell by, some, by how people talk, how intelligent they are. And so anyways, I think that's squatting help with my brain fog a bit, or maybe it's just because time passed. And so, I don't need just a little water, so I gotta mix my protein and my collagen into my cranberry juice. I don't think it's gonna mix very well. The collagen, though, it's hydrolyzed collagen, it dissolves pretty easily. But that whey protein doesn't. And Dave Palumbo says that that's because it's not as high quality as it should be, or as high quality as his, but that might just be a, a sales pitch. <sighs> and I don't think I can get. I don't think I can get species protein uh, for a decent price because I have to ship it from the U.S. This is a Canadian company. It's called, I think it's called Canada Protein or Canadian Protein. So, anyways, <sighs> there's that. Another thing I added to my stack was acetyl L carnitine because I already had some. I decided to add it back in because L, -car well, more so L carnitine, L tartrate is the, uh, it upregulates androgen receptors, but acetyl carnitine has more, uh, positive benefits for the brain. It helps, uh, kind of stave off, I don't know, the, uh, brain aging. So that's going to be somewhat helpful, I think, using Trembolone. But what my dosage is now, I had a different idea before when I started, I was going to do 25 milligrams a day, but then my sleep went to shit. So then I'm like, okay, I need to cut this out. I need to cut out anything that might screw up my sleep. <sighs> Just, just because I need to get this taken, I need to get back to sleeping good because, you know, a few days without good sleep, and you're rethinking your whole bulk, and you definitely don't want to train. And so, anyways, some some of Jeff Nipper lover is gonna tune in. He's gonna tell me that I'm out of breath, and therefore I'm wrong about critiquing Jeff Nippert and whatever. But I don't really. That's more. I'm just poking fun at Jeff Nippert, Really, I don't. I don't really dislike Jeff Nippert. Uh, cause I don't, if you, you know, if you're promoting health, I, cause I'm pretty sure he, if you're promoting health, cause it's not about just lifting, uh, although I'm the guy who uses tremble on, but it's not just about lifting heavy weights. You don't have to be, you don't have to be like a 500 pound squatter to be healthy, but you need to squat 405 if you're a male. So anyways, <laughs> so you 
you deadlift with a 495. Unless you're 90, and then it needs to be 405. So I've somehow dissolved this whole scoop into one cup of cranberry juice. So it's going to be a little bit of, a lot of stirring, but I don't think I'm going to do that until I'm done recording. Yeah, my brain fog's really cleared up. That's that's surprising and nice. I think I'm going to try and pad the bulk with drinking as much milk as possible because this other shit, especially the sugar, completely turns me. It turns me my brain to mush. So, anyways, but the tremble, the cycle is. I don't think it's going. I don't think I'm going to have to peak at the end of August. I think I can peak in July. When I do, when I, I'll peak at the same time, like at the end of my 20 hour squat progression, which is going to be at 475, that'll be my last set. I should be able to peak for overhead press. And so I'll take, the overhead press will be on a Monday. That way I can just gorge myself all weekend and I'll get some MK677. I'll probably put on like 10 pounds. And then also for the 475 squat, that'll be on, I might do that on the Sunday because then I can have all the fullness from my bulk that I do on Saturday. And so, uh, I just want to make it as, as easy, I just want to make it as easy as possible, or at least, you know, try and guarantee it. And by getting, like weighing more makes you stronger. And if you've been watching my channel for a little while, you're probably like, oh, that again, you're saying that again, but it's fucking true. Uh, fart collection. Why is this recommended to me? Yeah. When's she gonna do it? Mm. Is she just making like sex noise? Mm. Ten thousand views, and I just gave her another one. Fart collection, office girl farting in brackets. See more fart girl videos. Link in description. That lady is decent looking though. She's got the Amazon build. That's where she's got more like a, uh, a slightly more masculine, like a tall woman that has like somewhat broad shoulders. You'd probably think that you know, the trend may be definitely kicking in, but I always like women that had uh, a little bit of, uh, like a, a decent amount of muscle. Not like the really big, not like the female bodybuilders or the deep voices, but <sighs> if a woman's like 5'10 and has like uh some muscle, that's that's a good build. <sighs> Anyways. Uh, what the hell, sir? I lost the fucking plot. Um, yeah, so that's the uh, the plan. for, And so my cycle is now 500 milligrams of test per week. And I do 15 mil, I do four shots a week. So four half cc's because my new, uh, I'm not shooting anything into the muscles anymore. I'm just going to put it into the fat because I, uh, I got some insulin pins. Because another problem you get, because BD, which is the good needle brand, the availability is terrible now. So you have to get Chinese needles. And these Chinese ones that I have, I have to use two needles every time I do a shot because I have to draw with the one. But it's so dull after one puncture of the rubber. It's so dull that you'd have to, like, stab yourself. Okay? Jim Carrey, self-defense style. Okay? <laughs> okay? Just to just to peer, get into the muscle, and then also you have the, I also have the scar tissue to pass through, so it, it's it's really uncomfortable. And so, anyways, I got some insulin pins, decent price. Uh, I think they're called Easy Touch. They're like thirty cents a needle, twenty eight gauge, half inch, and so I just stick it into my ass fat because it's you know I, I I put one in my belly and I pinched it up. I didn't like that. It actually is still it, it's a little it aches a little bit after it still aches a little bit. But once I did it, I put some trend in there, it just a quarter of a cc. Didn't like that, but I didn't screw my work at all, at all. I could still put my belt on. But anyways, I got a lot of fucking fat. There's a lot of real estate for the for the gear to go in. So I just do maximum half cc shots. So that'll be four half cc's of tests per week. And then for trend, I do 15 milligrams every day. And since I have insulin pins, that's way easier to measure than on a three milliliter syringe. I've never used anything over. I've only used three milliliter syringes and then one milliliter insulin syringes. And so. Uh, there's like five milliliter syringes or 10 milliliter. I'd only get those if I was shooting cerebral ice and I'm trying to get some uh, background ambience, but all I got is, let's do this one. Echoes of desolation. Actually, let's go like this. Dream state logic. I was listening to this a lot back in the day, back in like 2020. I really, he ended up hating this. 
uh, era three, era cubed, space ambience. When I was in college, there was this guy. He we had I had a math class, and this guy met. He uh, answered his question with um, milliliters cubed, which is you know that's a, obviously a, a pretty obvious redundancy because a, a, li- a milliliter is a volumetric measurement. It's a measurement of volume. So it's obviously three-dimensional, okay? Tell me if I'm wrong, okay? But anyways, he didn't get, he didn't get a mark there. He thought it was, uh, I'm already showing me his test. He's like, what? This, it's like, no. <sighs> that only works for uh, one or, uh, yeah, one-dimensional measurements. And then you could square it or cube it. Anyways, uh, that segue just set me way off the tracks. Hundred so fifteen millig- milligrams of trembolone acetate, which is the good trembolone, per day. Okay, which is zero point one five cc's. I do two different shots because uh, if I'm doing that, but it's only I only shoot test four days a week, but I shoot trend seven days a week, and I just put it into the ass fat. And I don't know about you, that seems like the fattiest part on everyone's body. Even as a male, because I've heard other guys say that. You see other, uh, some people, have, some people have, uh, you know, I guess some people don't really have that much fat on their ass. I guess it depends, goes person by person, but I, I have, uh, my lean part is my, my arms. Okay. Some people have fat arms. They have no vascularity. Like Chad has fatter arms. Maybe he has leaner legs and, and ass than me. Uh, I don't really want to know, but, um, women, women definitely store a lot of fat right here. But yeah, generally most people are fatty in the ass, in the lower back, and then in the pecs. By lower back, I also include love handles. So, this will bring around to the sides, I guess. But um, I got 20 minutes. Let's see if I can do this. And uh, I think if that that level of um, I don't know gaspiness, that level of uh, I don't know, VO2, my VO2 max, okay, at this stage, if, if that's as bad as I have to deal with it, then I should, then I'll be able to uh, stay at this tremolone dosage, because, <sighs> anyways, I don't think, I, I, I don't, you don't really, I don't think you need to have more tremolone than that, and I don't want to start getting my sleep ruined, because we'll see if the food can just carry it, like I've been talking about. And uh, the strength's still good. Somebody said, um, somebody asked me if I'm on TRT Plus now because of my deadlift because I posted it earlier on uh, Instagram. And I posted it on YouTube short and they asked me if I'm on TRT Plus. I was actually at 658 for six reps um, before I had my little chest strain. But that, and that was just on 250 milligrams of test, although I was taking 50 milligrams of oxymethylone per day, uh, which is. I suppose still TRT plus, but that still brings up my like a weekly uh, anabolic steroid dosage to 600 milligrams. Okay, which is more than what I'm doing now. Actually, I guess no. Well, I'm only two shots deep for the test, but anyways, this will be my first week doing the 500 milligrams of test and 105 milligrams of trembolone acetate <laughs> and um, that's testosterone endothate that is. And I'm not using any aromatase inhibitors because I saw in Vigorous Steve's video that he, uh, I guess he figured, he reviewed a study and Tremblone doesn't work very well if you have low estrogen. Here we go. Mea culpa. Some of these uh, ambiences that I have, they have like, you know, it has like dynamics and whatever. And so sometimes I'm like, I'm listening to it and I'm like, wow, that's really loud. But it, it's uh, just the speakers of the thing I'm listening to it on. It's or it, like, like the phone gives you a different sort of mix than uh, you get from a stereo or headphones. The, here's another segue. Generally when people mix things, they use uh, monitors, also known as speakers. They use those because that's the easiest way to uh, make it where you're going to get like a, I don't know, a good sound on lots of different things. A guy told me you want it to sound good on a car stereo or on a phone. Because that's what people listen They listen to their music for their phone speakers. Are you kidding me? you got to use headphones at least. I like headphones. 
uh, and get analog headphones. <laughs> they're cheap. I use the Skull Candy ones. They're like 20 bucks. 15, 20 bucks. That's Canadian, so that's like uh, that's like 14, uh, uh, 14 cents American. So, uh, yeah, we'll see how far I can go with that sort of thing. And, you know, when I, when I, I was having trouble making a commentary earlier, and then yesterday all my commentary sucked. Because, you know, I got to put in some filler because people like the longer content. And I like making longer content, too. Because I don't do lots of editing. So I, uh, you know, what's the... I got I to gotta put... I got to make up for that somehow. And so we'll talk about PE, okay? I didn't really want to talk tell this story, but I figure it's yeah, it's kind of funny. Um, so PE is penis enlargement, okay? And I first learned about that because of Leo and longevity because he would cover a lot of topics and he was kind of a he's somewhat of a he, what he was because unfortunately he's dead which is a shame because in terms of like the supplements the health the health side and supplements and uh, steroid information side of the fitness industry he was the top guy he was the top guy and um, and I like his personality too and so yeah, I first came across it with him. It's like he talks about uh, penis enlargement. He talks about these techniques people do, and basically what they, what you do is there. Well, there's two different ways you have to you have to like break the tissue through like stretching and expansion, which is the collagen of the tunica, and that's like the main body of the penis that uh, dictates the size. And then the other method is blood flow. Okay, and Increasing blood flow to the penis, you get a better erection, and then eventually you get something called. Uh, if you can, if you can, oh, if you. Another thing with pumping, it's not only the, the tunica expand, and then it breaks down, and then the uh, body has to send like, the repair signals show. There's like a you know a need for repair, and so then there's there's uh, nutrients that are sent to the area, but for with the expansion also increases blood flow to the area more so than you could get naturally. And so then that causes angiogenesis, which is the birth of new blood vessels, okay? The third method is um, hormone. Uh, but that the hormone thing, as I figured out, only works if you have um, some sort of like androgen deficiency. And so you didn't develop properly. So it's people who have micro penises or people who have a stunted puberty. Uh, generally, it's, you know, it's kind of one and the same. And so... You know, there's studies where they give people like Anavar or other uh, anabolic steroids and then it increases the penile length. And so, <laughs> this is like a Boston Lloyd thing, okay? So I'm like, oh, shit. Because, you know, I've said in another video, it's like once you try to max it in one area, like for me, you know, steroid strength, then I try to, and then also uh, cognitive function. Although, you know, the stronger you get, the... the, the um, or the more you, the more you, you can't really have the uh, the trifecta, okay? Because the stronger you are, the less blood flow you have to your brajol, okay, and to your brain, because your your body's processing so much food all the time and repairing your muscle that you have brain fog and you have penis fog, and so eggplant fog, and so um, you could balance the three, and that would just basically be just by like. Or, or sacrifice one for me, I'd probably have to go down to like 250. I'd still look, I'd still look good. And I'll probably do that after this, this uh, sort of mini cycle. Well, I'll still call it a cycle. But anyways, I, um, you know, you see these things and it's like, okay, well, I think they gave these people, they might have, there's topical androgens, like there's one called, that's called Andractime, which is topical DHT. And people apply that to their penis. And because DHT is is responsible for the um, the uh, growth of the secondary male uh, sex sexual characteristics, okay. And so people use DHT cream to thicken their beard, and they put it on their penis to uh, to grow the penis. And Vigorous Steve's done an experiment on this. Anyways, um, so if no one's ever grown unless you have some sort of yeah like stunted puberty. If you take these androgens orally or you inject them, it's not going to affect your penis length. Although you might get a better erection. Which um, is you know you you want to have like you want to have like regular erections otherwise your penis shrinks, and you want to have good erection quality regularly. That's why like these boomers, the, all these fat guys with the beer bellies, their penis shrinks over their lifetime, and the the, the penis will only shrink if you have if you have if you're having 
either no erections or just poor quality erections. I saw this thing, uh, I saw a cigarette package that said, cigarettes reduce blood flow to the penis. If I saw that and I was a smoker, I'd fucking throw it out right away. Because I assume it's because of nicotine, because nicotine's a stimulant, but then the thing that's bad about cigarettes is all the other shit. Because, you know, you, um, smokers generally don't do these sorts of things, but you can make up for the, uh, lack of, uh, blood circulation by taking other supplements, probably, you know, vitamin E, uh, there's allicin, uh, which is a component of garlic, you can take, uh, fish oil, uh, you could take aspirin, a low-dose aspirin, uh, cocoa does that, um, magnesium, vitamin D, I think potassium does that as well, and so, anyways, um, but I mean, smokers, they don't care about these sorts of things because most smokers are dumbasses. Not everyone, not everyone who smokes is, is an idiot. But lots of them are. And so, uh, I went to Berkey with my brother yesterday and holy shit, those, there was, were some ugly, fat people there. Wow. Um, anyways, so I figured if you take these things orally, you inject it, it doesn't work. But it might work topically. So I'm like, oh shit. I mean, I figure something if something's more androgenic, it would have more of an androgenic effect on the uh, on the area locally. I had a little bit of tremble and acetate left over. I couldn't I couldn't not enough to draw it not not enough to try and draw it into a needle unless you're like full like O C D. You it might be like a twentieth of a CC. But get, getting that little last, like, 20th or a 10th of a cc out of a vial, out of a 10 milliliter vial, is a motherfucker. When you have a one-inch needle, even a half-inch needle. Because you have to have just a little bit of the tip inside the rubber and then draining it. And holy cow. Because I've tried this before. And if you, especially if it's your first time or second time or if you're a novice trying to draw the thing out of there, it's a motherfucker. Because what will happen is generally the needle keeps on coming out. And then, oh, man. So anyways, I had some, what I did is I, I broke the top off of it, and then it's like, okay, I applied it locally, okay? And at first, I'm like, oh, okay, this is this is all right, because it's, it's, you know, it's mostly oil, because it was in, like, grapeseed oil, I think, <laughs> or, uh, it, I think grapeseed oil, maybe MCT oil, but anyways, holy shit, it was okay at the start, but then, uh, then I felt the benzyl alcohol and the benzyl benzoate, and, uh, Holy shit, that did not feel good. I'm like, I need to get, I need to, that's all I'm going to tell you, okay? Don't do that. Don't do that. And uh, frankly, uh, in terms of growth, um, I don't know if it did anything. You probably have to do it regularly, and I wouldn't do that regularly because, holy shit. The, because um, the, another thing I was looking into is that the, uh, the glands is a, uh, it absorbs things easily because it's a mucous membrane. And so what people do with when they take oral steroids is they put it underneath their tongue or they, they break it up and they swash it around their mouth and it gets absorbed through the mucous membrane instead of swallowing it because it gets absorbed a more, it, you, you can absorb more of it if you don't swallow it. And so you absorb through the mucous membrane. It doesn't do the first pass of the liver, so it's less, less liver toxic and you absorb more of it. And so if that's also a mucous membrane, then you could apply it locally down there. And, um, so that, that was my thinking, but, uh, yeah, that wasn't, that wasn't a good idea. I remember when I, I, I did an interview, uh, recently with the story, story strength and the, our interview should be coming out soon. Maybe, uh, maybe next weekend. And so I, I think I had done that the day before I talked to this guy. That would have been a good thing for his interview. And, uh, <laughs> his, his fiance sitting right beside him and then I'm telling him this story, you know, cause thankfully my, my, well, maybe not thankfully, but you know, my, uh, these probably aren't things that girls need to hear or want to hear. Um, <laughs> yeah, she's sitting right beside him. She's not really on camera, but she was sitting right beside him or at least at the start of the interview she was. And yeah, that wouldn't be something she needs to hear, but, uh, <laughs> Anyways, so lesson the moral of the story is uh, don't do that. And see, I do things first, and then 
If you're a wise person, then you can learn from my mistakes. Uh, there's other guys. Leo, Leo from Leo Longevity said he injected growth hormone into his penis, and it didn't do anything. And he apparently he was doing high doses just too, because he used to make a lot of money. He would make over six figures a month. Not a lot, not like seven, not like six to seven. Figures, but he would make. I, I think he said he would make like a hundred to two hundred thousand a month back in his. Uh, he would do investment banking. That was his specialty, and he's a grad. He was he was a graduate of Carnegie Mellon. He's a, he's a really smart guy. He said that he was average intelligence, which is um, not sh well. He says marks were bad, but then he still got accepted to Carnegie Mellon, which is a top tier school in Pittsburgh. How the hell do you spell that? It's obviously Carnegie Mellon. I said Mullen, like the fucking weed. Average cost after eight thirty eight thousand dollars. Acceptance rate eleven percent. Ted Dam Ted Danson went there. Zachary Quinto? Quinto, that's uh, Spock. Is Carnegie Mellon considered a uh, new, uh, or Ivy League, classified as a new private Ivy? Pittsburgh, that's where um, Charles Taze Russell's from. That's where he's buried inside of his pyramid. And, uh, which is an interesting burial site. And uh, I guess maybe he, like, he uh, was inspired by King Tut or something. I haven't really looked into it that much. But anyways, um, there's another segue for you. That one's on the house. Uh, so, yeah, he said he was, an, you're not, uh, he was an average intelligence. He was just, you, well, you don't really want to go around saying, you, you know, I'm, I'm, you know, I guess in yesterday's video I was saying I was above average intelligence, but the guy was an average intelligence because his, his, um, his like hard drive in his head was, was crazy. Because he could, on the fly, cite, and he, he had so much statistics in his head. And he was he was a biohacker, so, you know, he's taking nootropics and things like this. He's taking uh, Dinepazil, 20 milligrams a day. He would take, that would, I think that's the highest dose he would go to. And that uh, that improves your memory by quite a, quite a bit. That's the drug they give to Alzheimer's patients. And he kind of, I guess, popularized it. Well, I don't know how many people take it, but I was taking it because of him. I was taking 5 to 10 milligrams a day for a while. And Dinepazil is an acetylcholinesterase inhibitor. And so it's also, so, it, you know, you have more acetylcholine in your brain, which, you know, helps with memory function. And um, it also improves REM sleep. And so when I was taking that, I would, my whole, like, night was just dreams. Unfortunately, I, I could only remember the, the weirdest ones. I didn't, I don't really, I wouldn't really have nightmares. But I just remember I have some weird ass dreams.